Cool. So we had a look at parallel and series resonant circuits and now um, a new factor. And this is a factor I've been referring to for a while. And I should put you a drain worker out in the previous example in terms of the circulating current and the, and the receiving current. So what that factor was is um, um, well, there's a factor, a, a, a variable, um, or yeah, a factor, or number rather. And it's a, it's a merit uh, for a resonant device, um, basically, basically with the circuit you've been dealing with. And what it is, yeah, it says that it is the ratio of the maximum energy stored in the cycle divided by the energy lost per cycle. And essentially it represents the efficiency of a resonant circuit to store energy. Uh, for a CD circuit, as you've seen, obviously, it is your, your inductive voltage or capacitor voltage divided by VR, assuming obviously VR and VC should be the same. And um, they do some play around with the numbers, and you can actually find the Q factor solely based on the characteristics of the circuit. So, if you have, so Q will be equal to 1 over R root L over C, which is basically on the right over there. And that is for a CD circuit. Uh, for parallel circuit, again, um, I on IC is supposed to be the same. I will obviously talk about why. And over there, um, IL divided by I. So basically, we expect the higher current circulating compared to what we, we actually supplied. And they do some play around with the numbers over there, and they get exactly the same Q factor. So the Q factor is the same for both. So you can just use 1 over R root L over C, alternatively, you can find the supply voltage and, and you can find the, the you know, the supply voltage obviously having, you can also obviously find the, the voltage across the inductor or the, the circulating current. Um, why is this important? What is Q4? And what it essentially is, so the saying the resonant circuits are used to respond so selectively to signals of a given frequency or discriminate against different frequencies. Obviously, I did mention slightly one of the applications was in communications. And well, what you actually look on to the right there is a low Q and a high Q, right? Um, and obviously, there's a frequency range that goes over. And what they're saying there is that saying the response of the um, circuit is more narrow. Um, and basically, it, we will say that it is a higher selectivity um, um, compared to a lower one, which is over there. So it'll be. It, you can only tune into that particular frequency. And so if, um, a quality factor Q is described below. It's basically the measure of selectivity as well, and also the efficiency, like I mentioned. And we speak of a circuit having an IQ, it is more narrowly selective. So um, what they're also saying is that, as they give an example saying, an example of the, uh, the application of resonance circuits is the selection of AM radio stations by the radio receiver. So obviously, you have a, a few bands or frequencies over there and they're saying the selectivity of the tuning must be high enough to discriminate sorry against stations above and below so it must the, the, the q factor must be high to kind of ignore the others that's what i mean by like at a particular frequency it was not high enough for the pickup your radio can pick up varying frequencies actually um, but not so high as to discriminate against the sideband so that is also interesting obviously it must be so high that it kind of indicates it so anyway Saying created by the imposition of signal by amplitude modulation. Okay, that's a bit of an overkill, but that's what the Q factor essentially is in terms of that. And it's also obviously used for filters in a similar fashion of filtering certain things out and on. Um, again, just what the Q factor is, and there I think what the word I'm trying to highlight there is just let's let me just highlight it for you. Um, so I want to obviously talk to it, and we obviously did a series circuit and where is this thing now? Over here. And this is the voltage magnification for a series circuit. As you know, the voltage will increase. Whereas a parallel circuit um, is defined as the ratio of, of, of the circulating current um, and, and, and also obviously the line current drawn uh, um, all from the supply and as current or as the current magnification. So the Q factor in the series circuit is known as a voltage mag magnification. Maybe I might tell that in for, for free two marks. Ask asking what is the difference between the series and parallel resonant circuit. Maybe it'll be a free two bonus marks if you know. And um, yeah, I should probably do that. 
One is for basically essentially current magnification, one is for voltage magnification. Um, typically, voltage magnification will give us more power, and maybe we can use it for, for maybe an amp or something. Cool. Um, and then in summary, that is just um, the comparison of the of the two of the two stuff, of the two circuits, and they're showing me the impedance and resonance. Um, one will be a minimum, parallel will be a maximum, as I said. The current will be a maximum on the series side, there's a minimum current on the parallel side. Uh, we looked at the effective impedance, obviously. It's R, just R, but on the other side, it's all the C R. We've used that. Both power factors at unity, obviously there's no phase difference between the two, where the two look at the resonance frequencies. Um, obviously, we did state that if the resonance is neg negligible on the parallel side, we will just use a series, series model or equation. Then obviously the series can magnify its voltage and also um, the current on the parallel side. And then or lastly, the magnification or the Q factor, should write there. Also known as quality factor or Q factor is basically um, that over there, which is just uh, which is just basically one over R over one over L C. Um, obviously, it's just two pi if L I divided by R I, and obviously, as you can see on the over here, and just becomes basically simple, simplified to the characteristics. Uh, I do want to make make you aware um, that. If you have a pure inductor, once again, without internal resistance, um, the, the Q factor, the formula looks a bit different, but for your for your sake, um, it's typically the one that you know over here. So, but I was, again, doing some research and obviously something didn't make sense to me. And I saw some Q factors were basically, it's the reciprocal of of this over here. So you have L over C over L, or C, um, C over L and stuff like that. So just making you aware that um, I am aware, and you should also be aware that, you know, um, if it's a pure inductor, then it's a different story. So just letting you you know, and but obviously the model you use is this one. So doing example three, um, we can um, we can just see how we find the Q factor over there, and let's quickly try to do this. So I, just, I can just literally just do it on the slide. Yeah, because it's so easy. And then, yeah, so we're not going to, I'll just, Probably do the examples and then just lay you off with, with some some practice or something. Um, okay, so for the first thing, um, we have a series for the internal resistance connected in series, and obviously we know we're aware of this. So for A, you have to find the reason frequency. Um, that obviously doesn't have nothing to do with internal resistance. So that's two pi over C L. It's going to be easy. We've done this. And if you just substitute this, C is going to be 50 times uh, 0.1. The reason the frequency will be 71. So you can see it's same thing, same old, same old, same old every time. For B, the maximum value of current V equals I over R. And obviously, we're just going to use the resistor here in this case. Um, that's the maximum value, as we've said before. So it's just going to be 200 divided by 5, sorry, um, 15. And it's going to give us 13 point. So that's the maximum current. OK. And then for C, right? So C, we've done this before. The one the voltage drop across the coil and the capacitor. And obviously, I did mention now that the coil has internal resistance. So Z out, which is a coil, we just have to say R squared plus x l squared and x l will be 2 pi um, obviously it was negligible it would be easier but it's 2 pi times um frequency so it's 71.176 times 0.1 so let me just work out that value times uh, what's it 71.176 times 0.1 we get an answer of 44.722. And then obviously we can work out ZL over here. So that's the resistance is 15 squared plus 44. Remember, you, remember we find the voltage drop across the coil here. And if you do that, you should get an answer of 
47.172 ohms. Okay, that's that's in your book, right? So then the next part, I'm still continuing on with C. Let's make it a bit smaller. Um, um, v L will be your I R times Z L or your you know your maximum current value. So it's 13.33 times um, the 47.172. And if you do that, that's going to be 6 to 8.95 volts, right? So obviously, we can see it's, a, it's magnified again to from 200. Then if you do your capacitive, um, obviously, we need to find your XC. Um, 1 over 2 pi Fc, and um, this will give us, um, let me just quickly type in, 2 pi times 71, 71.176, 17, 17, 71, sorry, 0.176, and obviously times that by the capacitor, you see what we get. Obviously, this is all easy for you guys, so there's not much, nothing to worry about really. So it's 71.176 times 50, and you get an answer of um, 44, 44.7215. 44 That's what I get. Um, which should be close to. The actual resistance here, yeah, it should be close to so 77.2, yeah, so exactly the same as inductance. I'm sorry, as the yeah, inductance. And obviously, the voltage drop across there will be just 13.33 times 7215. And um, if you type times that by the current, you'll get 596.137 volts. Cool. So and if you typically well, remember I said what is Q, Q will be VC over um, v, VR of the supply, and that'll be, let's say, 596.137 divided by um, 200, All right? Um, let's quickly see, 596.137. Nine eight oh six eight five, and obviously we we learned a new model, um, and that model is going to be so I think I can just say Q is what is it? It's one over R divided by R over C. So if you plug this in, you should get an answer close. So once again, this is a, a max current and it kind of stabilizes to this VC here. But obviously, that's for that internal resistance too. So it's um, can someone just work on that Q factor quickly? For, for this. And that's a Q factor basically there. Straight for plug and play, yeah. 2,8. Yeah, cool. Yeah, one four. Yeah. So I mean, obviously you want to just use a four and you get you get you get the two marks came over. Yeah, but I'm just showing you it's the same. And yeah, so this obviously, this is probably the peak voltage and it kind of stabilizes back to this. Um, obviously, this has no internal resistance, which makes it a bit tricky. Yeah. So it'll always be the low one. Very clear explanation. Thank you, Mr. Gitomo. I, I appreciate that. Sometimes I feel like I'm fumbling here. <laughs> you guys are not saying anything. Okay, so that is the Q factor. Plug and play. I've been talking about it the whole time, implicitly mentioning it through. So... Let me just get to the bandwidth and the cutoff frequencies. So there is this thing, so I'll just read it to you. It says, if you now reduce or increase the frequency until the average power absorbed by the resistor is in series with the circuit, is, is it half the value? So to remember the average value, or maybe it's the 0 0.07, or, or, or rather that's the, what the RM is, right? So I'm going to read that, 1 over root 2. The saying, you reduce the frequency to, to, to you reduce the frequency to that current, which will basically give you um, the power over the resistor. Um, what happens is it produces two frequency points. And I think I'm not particularly sure why 
this is the case. As a, I think we can't actually achieve, the, we can't actually do anything with a maximum cut. And so we need to find a, a reasonable range of, of, of frequencies to, to play around with. And what they say there, it's called the half power points. Um, that's if I'll be here, let me just move this up for you. The upper and lower frequency, I think we call it F1 and F2. And they're saying this points are three decibels down from the maximum. So obviously just bear with me there. I don't know how you, how you convert decibels into current, but um, taking that zero decibels is obviously the main thing. So it's basically three decibel downs, which is essentially 0 0.707 of the I max. I'm um, saying this three, three decibel points gives a current value of 70.7 .7 times its maximum resonant value. And they're basically explaining that to you. And you have two corresponding points, which is the lower frequency, which is called the lower cutoff and the upper cutoff, right? I don't know. Basically, I think that's the working area of a resonant um, of a resonant uh, circuit. So you obviously can't. I think if we stay at maximum, the circuit can obviously burn out and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I think it's the working region of a, a resonant circuit. I'm just using my logic here. And anyway, what what, what is there is that the distance between the two points. Obviously, that is important, so we know the range, and that is called the bandwidth. And the same bandwidth is a range of frequencies over which at least half of the maximum power and current is provided. So that's what the bandwidth is, right? So it's basically the distance between the two working frequencies, if that's the case. Because I don't think we can actually work at maximum. Um, obviously, we get, get super high voltages, and that is not desirable for, for depending on whatever it is. Um, that's just explaining, is exactly explaining the same thing. Obviously, you can see the, the, the series curve is inverted. Um, obviously, the impedance is maximum and we get minimum current. And then they give you the formal definition of bandwidth, which is your resonant frequency. If you think about it, oh, not actually, your resonant frequency divided by Q. So as you can see, it's it's um, all you have to do now when you find the, 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 the Q, you just take the resonant frequency divided by Q and you should get um, the bandwidth, which will give you the distance between the two points. And then if you want to find the individual points, what I mean by the lower cutoff, if on the higher cutoff, if H, all we have to say is the resonant frequency minus the bandwidth divided by two, and also the, the frequency, the, the higher cutoff will be the, the resonant frequency plus two. So obviously, it's just basically halfway, the halfway points between that two stuff here. Again, I think it's the working range of a resonant circuit. Shoot me if I'm wrong. And this is just some extra note, and it talks about the quality factor, talks about the peak energy. And yeah, the one, the one I wanted to mention was the saying, if um, the quality factor relates to the maximum peak energy stored in the circuit, which is the reactance to the energy dissipated during each cycle of the oscillation, meaning that it is the ratio of the resonant frequency to the bandwidth. And it's also the higher, the higher Q, basically the smaller the bandwidth. And the reason why that there was, I was talking about that there. So we have a higher Q, we've got a smaller bandwidth, but obviously have a lower Q, we have a bigger bandwidth in terms of a bigger working area in terms of that, whatever we need. Maybe the fault needs to work in a specific range. Um, same story, I just got it from another textbook. Um, they call it the half power frequencies. And it's just the same stuff, basically. Oh, it's the same thing I just told me I put it there. Um, for parallel circuit, it's the same as a CD circuit. Um, again, just obviously that curve is different and we use the same uh, formulas again. Um, but this looks the same to me, not, it's not inverted. But they're saying as with a CD circuit, uh, an, in, an increase in quality factor will decrease the bandwidth and obviously a decrease will, yeah, I'm sorry, I mentioned that before just now. But anyway, it's kind of the same thing. And yeah, we do example 8.4 and that's the, the last of, of that. So, um, do you guys want to perhaps try it out? Um, let me just quickly do it. It's, should we do it here? So, I think before I just do this problem, I just want to kind of show you exactly um, what you, what you, you know, what a typical, what a typical resonance questions look like, so that you know. So a typical reason to resonance question will look like this. Like I said, super easy. 
in play. And yeah, three marks. Pushing will go easily from 15 marks. And I just want to show you what difficulty is in the frequency. So I'm just going to. Um, Just to show you, so we ignore the, forgive the, uh, the mess here or on the text itself. But supply frequency, like the resonant frequency, uh, the supply current, the voltage across the capacitor, inductor, Q factor, bandwidth cut off frequencies. That's for a CD circuit. Um, for a parallel circuit, um, the scanning page. Um, and if you can do these problems, you 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 think should be sort, sorted out, like literally. Sometimes I might ask you to find the, the value of the inductor capacitor, obviously with this. So they don't give the inductor capacitor, they probably give you the, the resonant frequency. And then secondly, they give you the parallel circuit, they ask for the value of the inductor, the dynamic circuit impedance, supply current, the circulating current, the power used, the Q factor, the bandwidth and cutoff frequency. Do you guys get that? What, what a typical question looks like. It doesn't get harder than this. Mr. Breat, Mr. Viti, Mr. Simai, do you guys follow me? Okay. I'm just giving you the overview of, of, of how hard it is. If you can do that examples, you, you, you sort it. I don't even want to lie to you. It's not three phases where I have fun. This is like straightforward stuff. Um, um, yeah. Okay, so that is just that. So what I want you to do for me, before I find the bandwidth and cutoff frequencies, can you please find for me the without looking at your textbook? Um, can you find FR for me? And can you find your Q factor? Oh, let me sorry, let me use this one. Around. So FR is one over two pi LC. And while we're using this one, uh, Mr. Kitongo, while we're using this formula, can you please tell me? And your Q factor is. So you told me, do you know why we're using this formula? Or Mr. Casimiro? We're using this formula because the resistance is considered negligible. Right, so if it's not negligible, we have to use, um, you know, the other formula. But like I said, it will state there. Okay, so can I get these two values, please? Can I get the reason the frequency? Oh, the, is the frequency given already? Oh, so the first one is find the bandwidth and, we, oh yeah, we need, we, we, so we have the reason frequency, but um, the problem is we need the capacitor value so we can work at the Q factor. So that's a, that's a good play around with numbers. So that's our, so we work on what we know, our, our modified formula, that's L and that's C, and then to find C, it'll simply be, um, uh, one over one over uh, four pi squared times L times so this is, this is a very good play around uh, times um, F R squared. Cool. So can I get my capacitor value, please? Mr. Beard, Mr. Ford. Half comma oh one seven. Fantastic. Okay, simple guys. No fun here. Farads, and all we do is plug that in there, right? Obviously, there are other ways to find the Q factor. Um, and obviously, I mentioned to you, if we can find, um, well, there's a parallel circuit, so we need to find the, the current, actually. And then once you find the current, we can actually find the Q factor. But obviously, this makes it easy. So 1 over R is 5 ohms. Your inductor is 0 0.5. 
and um, your capacitor here is 25,017 times 10 to negative 6. So give me my Q factor. Um, 28,2. You guys agree with that value? Let me work it out. Yeah, it's just always going to be. Uh, is it 25, 25, 7, 7, uh, I get 7, wow, why do I get 17, is, is my, no, it's 5, oh, it's 0 0.5, oh, 1 over 5, not 1 over 8, so it's, I get um, 28.27, six six right um yeah so that's a q factor obviously you can work at the bandwidth frequencies um but like i said an alternative way to get q would be us finding our our dynamic in impedance so z if you remember what z is was l over cr right and L over C R our dynamic impedance or impedance here is L was 0 0.5. That's a 25,017 times 10 to negative 6. Then times um, uh, 5. That's Z. Just want to show you the other way 0 0.5, 25.017 times 10 negative 6 times 5. Um, Inductance is 0 0.5, that, I think we get a massive C, we get, it's going to be a big impedance because our inductor is so small, oh, zero, sorry about this is inductance, the actual inductor value, yes, 0 0.5, 3997.28, so that's the max impedance, then to find the current, obviously, it'll be I equals V divided by Z, and the current is a it's quite minimum current, eh? so it's 100 divided by 3997.28. And I get I is 0 0.025. This is this is either, either my supply current. Obviously, I have to find my circulating current across the, the other one. So that is your your IR, and you have to find your IC. When you find IC, divide by that if you get Q. Okay, I don't want to get too far. So like I said over here, um, uh, draw. Now we have to work out our. So we have to work our bandwidth. So our bandwidth is your resonant frequency of Q. And let me just get that sketch for you again so you have a nice look how it looks um and it's going to simply be the original frequency in that in that the previous thing it was uh 45 hertz divided by q and q was um uh, 28.27466 28.27466 and your bandwidth will be 45 divided by 28.27466 um hey okay. 1.59 hertz 1.59153 hertz then to work out your, your F, this is your F1, and this will be your F2. So F1 is equal to um, the resonant frequency of 45 minus the bandwidth divided by 2, 1.59153 divided by 2. Let me just get that answer. Get 44.46. Oh, I put in three there, sorry, 45 divided by 1.59153 divided by 2 is 
0.204 to 2 hertz, and then your F2 will be the higher one, will be 45 plus. So all you have to say is plus there now. So I'll say plus or minus. So that's F1, and for F2, we add just a plus. And then we get our, our range of frequencies, 45.796. Seven nine five seven six six hertz. Cool. Okay, guys, that's the end. Um, uh, all I can say is have a look at this website, have an example. There's another example. Go to this website, check. There's two examples in this. And we, the end of residence. And next week we start on our third last chapter, which is probably the biggest chapter, not the biggest, but like the, the last biggest one. The other two still, like AC motors is easy. Transformers is also really easy. Anyway, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed the lecture. Um, what do you think of the section, guys? Can I hear your thoughts? Because typically people don't cover the section. Um, because obviously, because we don't do filters. But yeah, I just thought I'll, I'll do it instead this semester. Any thoughts before we leave? You motored it through it, sir. <laughs> Thanks for now. It's good to know. It's good to know. Felt like you're a little bit fast today. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's good. It's good. I'm glad you 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 mentioning that because it's of time and yeah. And I, I like those comments here, but it's also some point you have to 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 do. Um, time is eating us, uh, our colleagues. It's bad. Eh? Like it's, it's, it's calculations are fine, but understanding, yes, 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 yes. I agree, I agree. But like I said, for this chapter, just know your calculations and you'll be all right. Um, you know what I mean? It's it's, it's just like an interim chapter. If you do the textbook with a few extra examples in John Bird, you'll, you'll be through three phase will be more, because three phase is way more important for you guys to know. So I'll, I'll, I'll put in quite a bit of effort. Um, in getting some more examples and questions and stuff. Um, anything else, guys? Any comments? Um, I'll have to read it. Yeah. But anyway, engage with me if you don't, but you must understand. Um, any, any last comments? Let me just see who else. Dr. Sinegram, Dr. Asa, are you guys are you guys still awake? Cool, cool, cool. Okay, guys. Thank you for attending today. I will see you next week, Wednesday. Um, starting in three phase, and hopefully I'll see you the previous week on campus. That is my plan. But three phase power is going to be fun. I'm looking forward to that lecture. Um, I started preparing, but I need some more preparation on that one. Um, otherwise, um, I won't see you again. Have a good uh, long weekend. Um, obviously, you have an assignment, but Try to rest at least on Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Maybe get back into the books Monday. Um, yeah, but anyway, have a good day further and see you. See you. See you soon. Cheers. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Wait, yeah, there's one more thing. Um, I'm going to be I'm going to be on campus tomorrow. So your scripts are with me. Um, are you guys on campus? Yes, I nearly forgot. Fantastic. I'll, I'll, I'll post an announcement on Blackboard. Okay. So I'll see you tomorrow. Fantastic. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, cheers, man. Cheers.